So I was talking with a friend recently about bass fishing, which is a pretty common topic for me. And the question came up, when do you throw a spinnerbait versus a bladed jig versus a swim jig? Now, these are the deep philosophical questions that bass anglers spend a lot of time thinking about. But I thought that makes a really good crash course topic. So let's give it a shot. Spinnerbait, bladed jig, swim jig, when do you throw it? Well, I'll give you my two cents. And recognize there really are no hard and fast rules around any of this. Uh, a lot of times these baits are pretty interchangeable. Uh, in fact, you could go down the same bank and catch fish on all three of these bank, uh, baits on a lot of days. Uh, but I really try to break it down as far as when to choose one versus the other according to what I think the mood or the uh, aggressiveness of the bass may be. So uh, spinnerbait would be for those times when the bass are most active and most aggressive. Uh, the swim jig being the most subtle would be when those bass aren't very aggressive. And then the bladed jig is kind of that tweener type bait. It really kind of fits in between the spinnerbait and the swim jig for me. So let's start with the spinnerbait. Now the spinnerbait's probably gonna account for more bass, at least for me over the years, than any other lure. I mean, it's an all time classic. And you know, out of the water, doesn't look that impressive. A wire harness, a bunch of metal, uh, a lead head and a silicone skirt. What does that look like? But whenever you put it in the water, those blades come to life and that skirt starts to pulsate. So puts off a lot of flash, obviously. And for that reason, I feel like there's a really uh, special situation where I'm gonna throw the spinnerbait every single time. And that's low light conditions. Now low light could be defined as early and late in the day or anytime you have some cloud cover like I have today but it also counts for whenever you have some wind or breeze blowing, blowing across the water. And any of, anything that breaks up that surface penetration where that sunlight doesn't uh, pierce quite as brightly into that water, that's a great time to pull out the spinnerbait. And the reason for that is those bass are typically not quite as tight to cover you know, on those low light conditions or windy days. And so they're gonna be a little bit more aggressive, they're gonna be hunting, and the flash of those spinnerbait blades can really draw bass from a long way away. Now on those days where it gets bright and calm and sunny, that's when I feel like the flash of the spinnerbait blades can actually work against you. It, it kind of has a mirror effect and instead of looking natural, now it kind of looks like a, a bunch of metal coming through the water. And that's whenever I reach for the swim jig. And the swim jig is just a really subtle, very natural looking bait as it comes through the water. Doesn't rattle, doesn't vibrate, doesn't flash. Uh, and I think the appeal of this bait is that it's just on them suddenly. And I'll throw this bait a lot in sunny, calm conditions and in clear water. And usually I can catch those fish when they're buried up into shallow cover, like a shallow bush. And the trick on catching with a swim jig for me is to run that jig right through the top of that bush or right into the heart of the bush and make it deflect and really try to get that reaction strike out of the bass. Now the bladed jig is kind of that tweener between the spinnerbait and the swim jig. And it doesn't have the flash that a spinnerbait does, but it's certainly a little bit more aggressive in its wobble than a swim jig. And you know, the, the nice thing about the, the bladed jig is it really works well in clear water, off color water, bright skies, cloudy skies. I mean, it, it's a really versatile lure. And I think of it as pretty interchangeable with the swim jig. Now, the one difference for me where I, I tend to lean on the swim jig a little bit more than the bladed jig is anytime I'm fishing around shallow wood because you know, the weedless uh, design of the swim jig just really lets me crash that bait aggressively right through the heart of the cover. Whereas, you know, the open hook design of the bladed jig uh, it just tends to snag and hang around wood cover. So you have to kind of finesse that bait around the wood, but the bladed jig and the swim jig, they really seem to fit, uh, you know, a really wide uh, range of water and weather conditions. And so they're probably a little bit more versatile than the spinner bait. Now my tackle setup for all three of these baits is virtually identical. And I feel like the rod and the reel and the line all kind of need to work together. So let's start with the line. And for me, I'm gonna go fluorocarbon all the time. I just like the, the way that fluorocarbon handles, especially around wood cover. Uh, but I also like the low visibility of fluorocarbon, especially in clear water. But I do want to go pretty heavy. I want at least 17 and maybe 20 pound uh, Seaguar Abrazex. And that Abrazex is just a really strong, uh, very abrasion resistant type of line. The other thing I love about Abrazex is it has a very low memory, uh, not much coil in that one. And so uh, a lot of those heavier test weight fluorocarbons, they do tend to have a lot of coil and memory and they can be difficult to work with, but that's not the case with a braze X. Okay, let's talk about the rod. And I've landed on seven foot is the ideal length for me. And uh, anything longer than that, and I tend to lose accuracy. I've recently started fishing the Kistler uh, Feel and Reel series rods. And these are really cool rods and really designed to, to fit these moving baits. What it consists of is a really strong graphite midsection that tapers into a really soft fiberglass tip. 
And what that glass tip does, number one, it gives you really good accuracy on your cast, but secondly, it flexes enough whenever those fish eat the bait that they can take the bait deeper in their mouth uh, before you pull the bait away from them. And so whenever you set the hook, you have a really nice strong midsection there that you could pull them and, and wrestle them away from cover. Really great design for any moving bait. I'm gonna pair that with a seven to one uh, Kistler Series 1 reel. That's a really great reel, holds a lot of line, very smooth, but that seven to one gear ratio allows me to keep a pretty fast pace on all three of these baits. And I typically want them just under the surface of the water. You know, I think what this subject matter speaks to in the larger sense is allowing the conditions to dictate our lure choice as opposed to just automatically picking up our favorite lure or maybe what we caught them on last weekend and just start firing cast. And really, if we'll take a second and assess the conditions, how much sunlight are we, do we have, how much wind, what's the water clarity, then choose the lure accordingly. Seems like we catch a lot more fish that way.